Ah, Portia, the beautiful oceanside city-state. Portia upholds quite the standard. Friendship, peace, quality of living, and of course, violence. Upholding the peace is not free and it is certainly not easy. The Civil Corps might claim to be doing their best to preserve the peace, but let's be honest. When it's apples to oranges, you're the one getting your hands dirty. Thankfully, you've come to the right place. Here at Timmy K's Armory, we will make sure that you are armed and ready to defend Portia's peaceful and violent free city. With violence. Starting off in the game, you won't be personally known for your skills with the sword. And quite honestly, some people are just downright rude to you. Not to point fingers. My workshop will always be number one. Now and forever, remember that. But nobody can afford to be rude to you when you are well-armed. Starting off in the game, you won't have a lot of options. And in fact, a lot of things are going to be quite a few levels above you. But that is okay, as we all have to start somewhere. To begin with, you might be tempted to use the very nice boxing gloves you get in the chest next to your house. And unless you've specifically named your character Mike Tyson, you might as well just give up on using these. But not to fret, as you will soon feel the stone-cold grip of a copper sword. First, we can start with the practice sword. Okay, now that that's over, we can now move on to the bronze and iron swords. The bronze sword can be crafted on a level 1 workbench. Its enhanced counterpart can be crafted on a level 2 workbench. The bronze sword does plus 45 attack, while the enhanced bronze sword does plus 60 attack. The final version of the bronze sword is the Blade of Malice. This weapon does plus 65 attack and applies poison damage. This can be crafted on the work table after obtaining the recipe from the sewage plant or the abandoned ruins. Make sure you keep all the previous versions of the sword as you will need these in the crafting upgrades to come. Moving on to the iron swords. The first iron sword can be crafted at a workbench and does plus 90 attack. The enhanced iron sword can be crafted at a level 2 workbench and does plus 105 attack. However, it requires the recipe from WoW Industries or from being purchased at Total Tools. Aim to have the Enhanced Iron Sword by at least level 15 or as soon as possible. The next sword that are to come are much better and blow these previous ones right out of the water. Before I get too far into the video, I just want to mention that I won't be talking about the ranged weapons. I just personally don't use them and I believe that the swords are so much better. There's also only, I think, three ranged weapons, so wouldn't add a lot more content to it. The next two weapons I'm going to be talking about are the Nova Sword and the Corpse Hammer, as you get them around the same time in the game. First up is the Corpse Hammer. This weapon is obtained from Remington during Rescue and Ingle's Mine mission. The hammer can also be bought at Total Tools after the mission is complete. The hammer does plus 200 attack, however it has a very low attack speed. Thankfully the hammer has a stun on impact effect, which can make it quite useful in situations with lots of mobs around you. However, since it swings so slow, you'll definitely have to get used to it. It's very slow. Next up is the Nova Sword. The Nova Sword is acquired from defeating Rock-On in the upper level of Ingle's Mine for the first time. The Nova Sword can also be purchased from Total Tools once the conditions have been met. The Nova Sword does plus 200 attack and plus 50% melee critical damage. This sword is probably going to be in your possession for a while. Depending on how fast you complete the main story quest lines, you're going to be stuck with this one. The next swords that we're going to be talking about are not craftable, as in you will have to complete quests and get them as rewards, so be prepared for that. The next items do contain spoilers, as you have to beat the main story to get them, so if you want to be surprised when these weapons roll up, uh, don't watch the next part. Once you've completed the mission, the final battle, and defeated the Rogue Knight, you will be able to acquire his sword. The Rogue Knight's sword will be able to be pulled from the ground in which it lays at level 50. The sword does plus 480 attack and 100% critical chance. This is the strongest weapon in the game, however, it's not the last one that you're going to receive. The sword attacks somewhat slow, so you might find another choice that suits your playstyle better. It's still very powerful, though. While using this weapon, you need to be aware that you will lose relationship points with members of the church as you are using a violent, corrupt relic. So, you need to make the decision of being feared or being loved. So the next and final three swords that I'm going to be talking about are the rewards you get from completing certain levels of the Deepest Ruin dungeon. The first sword you get is the Obsidian Edge. You will receive this sword from level 10 of the Deepest Ruin. It does plus 220 attack and 100% melee critical damage. The next sword is the Ruin Text Claymore. 
You will get the sword once you have completed level 50 of the Deepest Ruins. It does plus 210 attack, plus 60 defense, and plus 50% critical damage. While this sword does less damage than the Obsidian Edge, the plus 60 defense can be useful if you're dying a lot. The final sword from the Deepest Ruins is the Mequitel. You will receive this sword after completing the Deepest Ruins and defeating Floor 100. This sword does plus 240 attack and plus 50% melee critical damage. In my opinion, none of these three swords come close to comparing to the Rogue Knight sword, but for the sake of collecting items, definitely make sure you get these. Thank you all for watching my weapon guide. Hopefully you enjoyed it and will find yourself picking out your next best sword. I'm almost to 100 subscribers, so if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It always puts a huge smile on my face to see my sub count go up, and I am so thankful for the support I continually get from all of you. I have some more My Time at Porsche videos planned, but I'm also going to start branching out on the games I upload videos for. Hopefully you all support those as well. Thanks again, until next time.